And welcome to in-game chat for Saturday, March 28th, 2015. This is Season 9, Episode 13. I'm Scott. I'm James. I'm Dennis. I'm RJ. And I'm Nathan. And welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, James is back. Matt is not here with us uh, today. Apparently, we just can't get all of us in the same room at the same time, but well, uh, we're working on it. Then we wouldn't have enough mics. That's exactly so, right, honestly. Can we share before? True. Many true. a time, actually. We have. It's no big deal. And we can do it again if we need to. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, uh, you can go to in, you can email us everyone at ingamechat.net. You can find us on Facebook. You can also uh, hit us up on Twitter uh, at ingamechat. And of course, we're streaming the camera live right now through Twitch. Head over to twitch.tv. You can find us there. Search for Ingame Chat, and you'll be able to find us uh, no problem. And you can join the chat room live while we broadcast. Hello, everybody hanging out in the chat room. Lots of people there. Thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon with plenty to talk about. Lots of new games, actually. I really only thought there was one game releasing this week. No, we get two this week. Apparently we got two. Exactly. And uh, we're going to talk about them uh, during this episode. We've got uh, Bloodborne, which of course released on Tuesday. And it didn't release on Tuesday. I believe it released on Thursday. was a game called Pillars of Eternity. Mm-hmm. Latest from Obsidian and Paradox Interactive. I know, isn't that interesting to say? The latest from Obsidian. <laughs> and and I didn't even know it was Paradox published. I, I had no idea. Um, yeah, they they mentioned that in all the uh, in the lead up into that. It's like, oh, Paradox e- even for uh, City Skylines became mm-hmm. such a hit. I know. I wasn't even aware of that. I I you know Paradox. I knew Paradox from their situations with I think it was Magica. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much the only familiarity I had with Paradox until, of course, City Skylines hit, and it was a uh, massive deal for them as well as for for most players as well, and for me. Um, Just a really, really big deal uh, for that. And then, of course, uh, I hear about this. I, You know, James had made mention of it. uh, You know, every time we would look at, like, oh, what's coming out for the year? Let's see. Uh, He would run across that, and I remember specifically him running across that, mainly because of the Obsidian connection. Yeah, um, this and uh, Tides of Numenera are two yeah. big. But I had no. Yeah, I was I was completely not necessarily on a blackout from it, but most more than likely on a uh, just a situation from the uh, not familiar with like the history. Yeah, of that. So I, I it was all new to me, and and we'll tell you how that went. Because uh, I did get a copy of it, and I did play it, and I believe you, me, well, Dennis, myself, and James uh, had a chance to play it, and we're going to talk about that um, a little bit later on in the show. Kind of, you know, to do the whole situation of, hey, what did you play this week, we kind of know what everybody played this week. Yeah, um, I will say <laughs> for you, outside of Pillars of Eternity, Dennis, did you play anything uh, else this week? Yeah, aside from my usual KOL, uh, Gus, I picked up Lord's Shadow 2, uh, Last week I played through the DMC uh, campaign, and I was like, oh, wait, I, I haven't played through the DLC campaign for uh, Force Shadow 2, where you play as uh, Alucard. Hmm. So I went back through that, and then it's like, ah, it's been a minute since I played the main campaign. Let me go through it. And I tried to I tried to watch that. Yeah, I saw, I saw you pop in there. Did you have issues with that? It would go a few frames, and then it would just lock. Yeah, I my setup at that time was uh, Duke King on the lap my laptop monitor and my uh, tv oh really i had, oh. I had to adjust it for something weird so that might have been part of the problem that which is odd because the laptop wasn't even on but i guess well i don't know is that what you did with pillars this morning were you doing the same thing uh yes yes it was pillars ran fine hmm. i watched pillars no problem while you were while you were playing that that's interesting I, I guess obviously pillars is not i will say pillars may just be less in, graphically intensive yeah it's not it's not it's not graphically intensive it's not cpu intensive it's this is a i don't want to say it's a bare bones type of game to well to, it, it is very much like the black isle games uh like torment in baldur's gate and the like it's this its main priority is not graphics main priority is getting the yeah is presenting the rpg mechanics yeah mm-hmm. and so i don't want to say it's bare bones but it is wide open to plenty of systems to be able to play this game uh so so it but yeah it ran fine when i was watching your stream uh this morning but your castlevania 
stream not so well. Yeah, that's a shame. Not so well. Mm. Uh, anything other than other than that? That's been about it right now. So yeah. it's just those two. I need still need to go through. Uh, they just released Life is Strange episode two and uh, the next Tales from the Borderlands as well. So hopefully, Life is Strange. Did you buy the full season on that? Yes. I think I asked you this before. Yeah, yeah. I did, and I, I liked episode one. It was. It's very much like a Telltale game, just by uh, the guys who did Remember Me instead. Mm-hmm. I actually put some time into Metal Gear Rising. The um, Revengeance. Platinum, right? Yes, Platinum Games. Mm-hmm. I, uh, in fact, last week on this show, before the show started, I, I used the internet here at work to download um, that game. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I fired it up a couple of times uh, this past week. And I've enjoyed it. It's, you know. Yeah, I, I played a demo of it a couple, what might be a couple of years back now. I can't remember the exact release date. But I, I did not understand either the combat or the, I've had a hard, was the stealth yeah, mechanic. I had a hard time. I went back through the tutorials and kind of worked over that a little bit. Um, I say the tutorials, the VR missions, whatever, um, which they mm-hmm. count as tutorials, uh, to kind of learn some of the combat. Apparently... Uh, while I was quitting my game the last time I played it, uh, it it's weird. Like, if you, if you want to quit, it takes you back to the title screen. And then you have to log back into your save game in order to quit to the desktop. Very strange. But, so every time I would do that, I would go through and I, I um, before I quit this time, I went to my options just to look over things. And there was like, here's your move list. And I was like, oh, well, there's that's great to know that I can look at, uh, you know, the different combat techniques that I have. Yeah. Uh, and then during the upgrades and N- stuff Not like unlike that. something like DMC or, and the like, where you can, you know, here's your combat moves, here's your combos. I like the way DMC did it better. The yeah. way that you go through your leveling and you can see the different moves and what they do. And it gives you a... That that wasn't the case that I saw in, in, in Rising. No, you don't. Like, I was doing upgrades, but it didn't show me that, oh, now you've unlocked all of these different sets of moves that you can do it didn't show me any of that i had and to go into like the options and and look that over did it not, did not feel were. like you were like oh here's and now i feel like i have this uh bit more power up essentially with the exception of you know extending my health bar that was it mm. it didn't feel that way i'm early into it mm-hmm. so but it so it didn't feel that way uh to me but i put some time in with that i've been going back to playing some pinball uh I've really i did silver ball sundays last week and played, uh, I think the table was Rome that I played, which was a brand new table for me, an old one for them, Zen Studios. By the way, I can't <laughs> say many details, but you'll see a press release on Monday from Zen Studios. Oh, interesting. Um, it's about a table, but it is not, it's not their big deal. And that's coming a little bit later. But The table's name is NDA. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen it. I haven't played it. I only know... I know the table that they're going to announce on Monday. Um, it is not out of the universe that they've been working with so far. So okay. it's, it's with the licenses that they've already gotten so far. It's just a brand new table. If you can think about what's going on lately, you'll probably be able to tell what it's going to be. Actually, no, that's a horrible hint since Marvel's got movies coming out every <laughs> single month, it seems like. Yeah. Um, anyway, you'll know about that Monday. It's the, it's the stuff down the line. It's the other one down the line that, uh, that I know the name of. That, that Oh. That I can't tell. Um, it's just ready to burst forth from. Oh, me. I want to so bad, but I can't. Um, so I did some. I did some more uh, pinball stuff, and I also played some more speedrunners, and I've also done some more Batman Arkham Origins just for playing that. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's pretty much what I've been in, been into. Uh, I want to move over to RJ real quick though, because uh, outside of playing more Bloodborne, you just got back from your tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just got just and got back about around. Uh, we talked to you a little bit on the phone about that, but mm-hmm. go into some more detail about that if you could. Well, yeah, it was a uh, it's, it's a Southeast major, one of the biggest uh, fighting uh, video game tournaments in the Southeast. Been running for 18 years now, and uh, you know we sold out the hotel. You know, uh, we had folks come in for emergency registration as well. Folks who just walk into the door and uh, emergency registration for games. So you had some uh, really nice sized pots and sponsors giving, putting, adding more to it. So you know they break it down to the first, second, third. I think it's uh, maybe 60, 60, 30, 10, I believe, or is, or the denominations are broken up in a, in a better, a bigger way. I imagine for if you 
do the emergency registration file round? Is, is it a significant increase in? No, the I think admission? it's still a it's still a ten dollars per uh, per entry okay. per game. Uh, it's just that the uh, attendance badge is a little more. The earlier you get it, the lower the lower ah, cost it is. Okay. So yeah, in uh, my case, it was uh, forty bucks. But if I got it like maybe two or two or three months earlier, it would have been like thirty or something. So if you know you're going, it's best to just go ahead and get it now because, like I said, uh, the hotel rooms go out quick. Yeah. And uh, we sold out the uh, we sold out the venue this time around again. Nice. So yeah, it's uh it was always it's always a major event, man. Going to that uh going to that uh location, but uh, one of the highlights we had, <laughs> my personal was uh the day we call it day zero shenanigans. Uh, you know, first thing we get there is like Thursday night. You know, get there, set up our get our setups. Uh, prepared and ready and we start yeah, get your rooms yeah and get, get the up. rooms get start playing mm-hmm. practicing for the, the whatnot but uh you know catching people uh sleep in the wrong locations um <laughs> <laughs> if anybody ever hear of it there's a place on facebook called fgc presents bodied and basically it's a comp- it's a compilation of pictures of people sleep if you caught sleeping anywhere other than in your hotel room you know you're going up on the <laughs> you're going up on the page <laughs> and there's some folks who've been uh it's amazing you know every year someone it's like you focus so much, you practice so hard, and you just get so fatigued, and they just don't want to go to the room, so they'll sleep on the couches in the lobby or in the venue itself. Or one person was sleeping in front of the uh, Mad Cat's uh, control peripherals display, just out. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just walking by, just it's common practice to them. You how did the uh, how did uh, did anybody hear from from locally? Did they do well? Uh, yeah, anybody... uh, Greg, uh, you had him on the show. Uh, yeah. Had him call in. He got uh, in the ultra tournament. I believe he got fiftieth uh, out of over four hundred people. So that's nothing to sneeze oh, at. Nice. That's pretty. That's pretty doggone good. He did very well in the uh, in the uh, tournament for Ultra Street Fighter Four. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, I believe um, Maurice, another friend of ours locally, he uh, got around the same uh, got around the same placement as well. My my case, I'm just trying to get out of uh, I'm just trying to get out of. Um, pools <laughs> to get out of there if i can just get out of that man it's a it's a step up i mean like i said it did a little better than last year but it's it's still a work in progress really is there was there was there discussion and talk of you guys going to vegas for Evo? we had a little bit of talk about that so far we've had uh two folks say maybe yeah maybe they go mm. but um i definitely would like to go if uh i'd if like you to go to yeah i would like you to go to mm-hmm. so i think that would be yeah, great. the more we the more we get the more the more we get the more likely we'll uh We'll go into it. We're still we're still talking about it. So yeah, it's definitely something that's uh, in the works, so to speak. Now, for uh, some of you, and for I know that Sir R.J. and Dennis and, and Nate here, um, you haven't seen James since what January when I was at PAX. I haven't seen him in the studio here since November, early November, I think, was Probably the last here, time yeah. uh, he was in here with 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 me as well. So. Anyway, welcome back. I don't want to go over everything that you've been playing, but outside of Pillars recently, anything on your list that you've been doing? Uh, Pillars, I guess, a little bit uh, over the past couple of days. Uh, most of my time spent re-rolling my character yeah. and starting the game over again. Just uh, Are you just trying to get a uh, feel for what's the best class? Or? Yeah, what I like best, okay. I think. Um, uh, I've been playing that. I've been playing uh, Final Fantasy XIV oh, again. Really? Yeah, I dropped my I dropped my WoW sub, you know, just because. You know, I whatever. did not expect to hear you say that. Really? Yeah. I have actually said no. It. Dropping your sub? Yes. Final I, Fantasy XIV. I drop 14. my sub all the time. Final Fantasy XIV. I, I if you expect. had actually listened to me at many points over the course of the last year, I've talked about how much I loved that game. It is the only other traditional uh, theme park style MMO that I'm even hmm. remotely interested in. I played it at launch. Yeah, I remember a, that. Well, it was uh, it was a really tragic launch. Yes. It was actually mm-hmm. really, really, really bad time. Yeah, uh, you, for play, a, you for played a lot the of people. original iteration of fourteen. I did not. Oh, you did not. No, you no. got in on. I the played. Realm uh, Reborn. Yeah, I played uh, when a Realm Reborn uh, relaunched. I guess when the game relaunched, uh, it was not good. Uh, it was yeah, really, really I was bad there, time. Right there with you as well. That's right. You did play mm-hmm. for the first for the first month of that. I guess. Yeah, I, I used free month and then. Monies and time as right, well right. get me out of it. And uh, it still keeps me out of it. I had some other things to do, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and dropped it. But I very, very much liked the game. It didn't feel like it was entirely ready for the market, ready for release. The servers eventually got fixed, but that burned up about, you know, uh, two weeks of my first month. Uh, and then I wasn't particularly satisfied with some of the other things that were going on. So 
uh, knowing that they have a uh, an expansion coming uh, out Heaven's in June. Ward. Heaven's Ward. Yeah, they announced their first expansion. Uh, that'll be here another three months. So I figured this is a good enough time to get back in, see if I can figure out where I was, which I, I didn't, by the way. Actually, uh, that game, interestingly, has uh, two different subscription options. Uh, the first of which being a, a cheaper option. Is this something recent only, they added? Or they, no, no. It's, it's always been, like been there this, since? Yeah. It's a, it's a cheaper subscription option, just by a couple dollars a month. Uh, you only get one uh, character per server. Okay. You can only make one character per server. That's not a huge problem considering uh, any one character can actually hold yeah, you can be any, any of the jobs yeah, you can, in the game. You can be any of the classes. Hmm. Uh, there, is no, there is no limitation there. It is, uh, it, it's suboptimal, I think, to try to make one character uh, every class if you were interested in it just because there's not enough. Uh, there's, there's not, not there's enough XP to go around. Basically. Yeah, because you use your beginning XP in your starter class, and right. then it's like what level ten? You get the option to switch around. Yeah, you can switch around, um, and you get uh, daily style quests. You know, you get a uh, little commodity quests all the time, but they don't have an enormous amount of XP. The dungeons don't give an enormous amount of XP, so it becomes very grindy after your first couple of s secondary classes. Uh, there's enough to do a couple of classes because you have to have a couple of classes mm -hmm. before you can choose a job, whatever. Uh, but anyway, I I I was terribly lost in the whole thing, and I couldn't remember where I was. I couldn't remember what the story was, uh, and there is a pretty good story actually running running through that game, particularly for an MMO. So I yeah. just I I I flushed my guy, remade him, started over, and I've been uh, been playing back through that. So that's my sort of spare time watching yeah. Netflix. Um, mindless kind of thing, but it, I, I enjoy it. I liked it then, and they've done let's see, in the a little more than a year since I've played it, they have put in a, an enormous amount of work. Awful lot of content, awful lot of additional things, uh, <sighs> both character specific and, and group specific. That's not what I need to hear, man. I know, it's actually <laughs> uh, from the perspective of someone who hasn't seen it any do anything past launch. I, I left before even the first major content patch came out. Uh, there is a ton of stuff in there, and they fixed a lot of things that weren't good. They made a lot of quality of life improvements, yada yada yada. All the reasons that people leave a game and come back a year later are in place. So uh, the rest of the community is just sort of uh, marking time, you know, waiting Wait for their at, at, at their high level stuff and trying to finish off their wish lists or their bucket lists before the expansion. I feel like I have enough time to sort of play semi casually and get to where I want to be. But I liked it. I liked their. Dungeons, I liked their class system. I liked, you know, a majority of what I saw from their group content. I love the music and the setting. And I think if you have ever been a fan of music, setting, characterization, uh, and general world building from a Final Fantasy title, uh, but are also comfortable with the idea of, uh, you know, a theme park style MMO, then it's, it's very good. It's a good blend of the two. It's not amazing, you know, but... Uh, it's pretty swell. Sometimes you don't need amazing. No, no, and I like it. I like it very much. It's got a really. It, it's very much its own thing, uh, and I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. So, I re, I guess downloaded uh, the Elder Scrolls. Yeah, because because yeah. that went uh, that went free to buy to buy to play. Oh, yeah. that, buy uh, to play. Yeah. That obviously got brought up in the chat room as soon as we were talking about. You know, Final Fantasy XIV's. Oh yeah. Or, well, well, I mean, it's notable that they're horrible has launch. Gone that way. Yeah. Right. No, they, yeah, they had an absolutely dreadful launch, but I, I think that uh, FF14 really justifies its its subscription. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not to people who aren't going to to pay for a subscription based MMO anyway. The, I can't imagine what it would take for yeah. people like I, that. I, to, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised to see something in FF14 similar to the WoW token that's come out in uh, or yeah. is coming out mm -hmm. in soon. Yeah, I, maybe. I, I I don't know. It's tough to see where they're going, but they seem perfectly happy with what they've got. Yeah. Uh, Elder Scrolls tanked essentially right out of the gate uh for various reasons so but i bought it i bought it at launch that was another thing that I, I that i bought and spent about you know 30 days on when it first came out uh so i'm i'm an owner never a subscriber and won't be i don't think but i did re-download it and i just haven't given it any attention at all uh and aside from that el uh, elite mm -hmm. lots and lots of uh, elite dangerous oh that's right yeah god that was have you uh is there any kind of, i mean there's there has to be some kind of progression in that game some 
like goals you can uh, advance and the like. Oh, sure. There are things you can do, but there are no – the. When you start that game, when you play that game, you are not welcomed into an organized system. You know, mm. you are not invited into a game world that is all shoots and ladders, right? It's not all checkpoints. It's not all turnstiles. There are better ships for more money. There are different types of combat. There's PvP. There is PvE of a sort. Uh, it's large, if not massive, online. Uh, it's very peculiar, it's very much its own thing, and it is absolutely, in every meaningful way, uh, kind of a kind of an empty sandbox. There are things to do, but nobody has anything that they... Nobody needs anything from you, no one wants anything from you. You're not yeah, there's, level-gated. There's no like, quest not, log or anything. No, like. there are mission-style things you can do, but they're mostly for reputation, and reputation is really only about either gaining access to certain systems uh, that you need a security certificate to, you know, to be allowed like a stamp on your passport, essentially, mm-hmm. to be able to go to places like um, Alpha Centauri or Earth or any number of other, you know, several dozen different star systems. Yeah, because most, most of what I see, aside from, like, you know, Oculus Rift uh, things and, like, it's like things like uh, cool tricks like the guy trying to get contraband into the starport. Right, and, and, and see, that's changed like significantly that. since, since he was doing that. He was doing that in uh, uh, the backer beta mm-hmm. uh, better part of a year ago. Uh, and the game has grown a bit. They've added more ships. They've added the uh, the update that allows for a lot of significant group activity. Uh, but for the most part, it is an it is an empty place with a really really great flight mechanic, uh, a really great set of systems for flying around in space, blowing up other spaceships, and that's about it. If you're looking for something that gives you XP, if you're looking for a story, if you're looking for uh, individual personal character based skills, none of those things exist. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, there's, there's definitely a mark for that because it's hearing that makes me think of the guys you you told me about would play Flight Simulator, kind of like they, uh, they were, would they would be uh, like actually like they would RPG their, their flight sims. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's similar. Um, it's ju- it's very good. It is does not have broad appeal. It is not Star Citizen. It is not looking to tell you a rousing uh, Squadron Forty Two esque, you know. Uh, Star Lancer type of story. That's uh, mm. it's not Wing Commander. It isn't yeah. that at all. It's elite. Um, it is sort of cold <laughs> and impersonal, um, but it's big and kind of fun as long as you don't need your handheld. You know, it's never going to tell you what to do ever. It is just here's a ship. You're in space. Figure it out. See you later. Uh, and that's how it's managed. <laughs> it. I, you know, I want to, I want to say it. It doesn't need more handholding. It definitely needs more exposure of the information. There's, there's tons of information in the game, but the game itself is incredibly stingy about that information. It has no interest in telling you whatsoever uh, what items are available for sale at which space stations. Uh, they just give you sort of a cursory amount of information and, and leave it up to you to figure it out, find your own best trade run. That's perfectly fine. But even here in the 21st century on Earth. I can figure out where things can be bought or sold, even though I've never visited that location. I can I can tell ahead of time exactly how to plan my trip from one place to another uh, fairly accurately, uh, without having to use you know like weird hacks to get that information. Stuff like that. It, Elite's fine and it's super fun, uh, and spaceships blow up really really great. But that's about it. Getting more money, uh, buying better spaceships. It's what most people are doing in general. Hmm. Uh, the exploration is fun, you know. Uh, if you're the first person, for example, to uh, find uh, and, and do a detailed analysis of a star that no one else has visited in person, it'll be, like, not named after you, but but it'll be noted forever and always that you that were the You discoverer. were the one who found it, yeah. Things like that. It, it is fun, but it is absolutely a sandbox. It looks brilliant. It's exciting. It's got a lot of... Uh, uh, emergent style gameplay. It does. But it is not for hardly anyone. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it to almost <laughs> anyone I know. Like, I just, you know, my time with it at PAX South was just to try out the Oculus Rift with it. And uh, and it was just a nice little one on one dogfight type situation. That was exciting. I loved the way yeah, that whole fun. situation worked. And, and I was using the, um, oh God, what are they called? Uh, the, the, flight stick and 
the, the Hotas, Hotas. That's hands right. on throttle and yes. stick. Yes, yes, hands on throttle and stick. The Hotas w- was there set up, plus the Oculus Rift with it. Uh, if you want to talk about immersion and yeah. emerge it, yeah. yeah, that did it. So that was a lot of fun. I installed, uh, I've installed, but I haven't played. Um, Gersnort has been trying to 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 get my attention in that direction, and also a couple of people when I was streaming City Sidelines, City Skylines, were asking me if I was into MOBAs. I was like, not really. And they said, would you be into one if like, you were familiar with the characters and were familiar with the story and plot and everything else? And so they said, well, you should try out Infinite Crisis. It releases soon. Oh, and yeah, so yeah, that did come out. That came out this past week. And so I went ahead and installed it. I have not, uh, I have not touched it. Free to play, obviously, but I, I don't know the first thing about the way MOBAs work or anything like that. But I thought, hey, this has a nice dressing. Well, they're, they're super, super hard and complicated, which is why... No, they're not at all. Yeah. <laughs> That's why like 600 million people yeah. play yeah. them. You, you kill Incredibly things on the map and kill the other players. You need That's... like six buttons yeah. yeah, and a mouse. That's about it. Well, it's, uh, it, it's uh, like I said, it's got, it's, got, it's got a nice dressing for something that, that could hold my attention more than the other stuff would. And, but now the gameplay has to work with it. So I'll see. I don't know. I've never tried them. But. We'll find out. Maybe I'll have a, something to say about that next week. Anyway, we got to take a break. When we come back, we will jump into Bloodborne. I know that uh, Nate has to leave a little bit earlier than usual uh, during this episode, we'll, so we want to get his thoughts in on Bloodborne. So we'll be talking about that next, and we'll have more of in-game chat here in just a moment. Here is music from Oblivion. <laughs> And welcome back to in-game chat. That is, can, you know what that is, don't yeah, you? Yeah, Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah, do you know the track? The 13th Struggle. Oh, you struggle. already know the track. Okay, there you go. That is exactly what it is, the 13th Struggle. Well, welcome I've back. I've only played just a little bit. Well, you were Hearts. the one who gave that to me yeah. anyway, so I figured you'd know, but um, I knew you'd know what game it was from, but to know the uh, actual track name um, probably isn't actually impressive coming from you, to be honest with you. No, I, I know a lot of track yeah, names. I would think so. Anyway, welcome back to the show. We are currently, well, like I said, we didn't really go over what we've all been playing lately because that's pretty much going to be the meat of the show. We played, all of us have played uh, pretty much the big two releases that were this Mm -hmm. week. I I originally thought there was only one big release this week until James got in touch with me, I think, on Thursday it was. Uh, God, was it it the day of the release for Pillars? No, it was the day before. It was the day it was on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. He got in touch with me about that and then... uh, I kind of, I was like, I, it was, I guess it was the fact that it was Paradox, and I thought, well, let me give this I, a shot. I tried, thing. and see, I tried to warn you against it. Yeah. I didn't try to sell you on it. I no, was like, look, 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 okay, so uh, there's this thing, and like, have you looked at it, or have you already decided that maybe it's a little bit too far outside of your comfort zone? Mm-hmm. Uh, because this is, uh, 
in ev- like in in every single way pillars of eternity is about the kinds of games uh, that we were playing 15 years ago yeah the, that Baldur's i was Gate, not the that you were not Day you were yeah. you weren't even remotely in in this kind of game's orbit mm-hmm. this is not your kind of thing you were not paying attention to it um and it's it's of a very particular kind of flavor, you know? Yeah. Not everybody's going to like it, not everybody should, and it certainly shouldn't be built in such a way that everybody would like it, yeah. right? And in general, it's not like there haven't been any games like this, and the older versions, you know, the uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, uh, Planescape Tournament, Icewind Dale, uh, Arcanum, all of these sorts of things have been long available on GOG.com or, or through other means, uh, some of them even on mobile. Some have found re-releases like Baldur's Gate. Yeah, exactly. Like, like if It's not like you could not play something like this if you wanted to. Um, there, is, there is the eternal problem that most of them are classics in, in the literal sense. They're not classic in style, but they really are 15 to 20 years old, which means that they're not very aware of modern mechanics you know, yeah. in, in their design. So... I thought like maybe you would be aware of this because of what mm-hmm. it is. It was a, a very serious Kickstarter. Um, I think the draw for me was also something new that I'm not saying I was disappointed with Bloodborne. I had lost the excitement to go that way. Yeah, you route. and I did at the same time. I, I think we were both making an assumption that that yeah. was going to be something we would play. Which is which is where I was going with this because I did want to talk about Bloodborne. And, and originally I was set to go buy that game from Best Buy on Tuesday right after work had had planned that you were sitting at home planning on doing the exact same thing yep. uh, point to James when I'm saying that and it turns out that both of us decided against it and we'll get into that why but two others of us decided to go ahead with that and knew they were going to do that and that's RJ of course um, who has a long history with this whole from with from software's whole thing which mm-hmm. is odd because another game that I played since the last time we played I, I said I wanted a QTE event, and so I went for Ninja Blade, I think is what it's called. It's on Steam. It's old. It's called Ninja Blade. I knew it was nothing but QTEs. I loaded it up, and the first thing that pops up is from Software's logo. I, thought, I didn't know they worked Ninja on Ninja Blade was kind of fun, actually. I didn't know they worked on this, um, and sure enough, they did. I like Ninja Blade for the fact that uh, I like Ninja Blade for the fact that if you mess up in a QTE, it doesn't put you... At the beginning of the fight, it just starts over that right. exact QTE right then. It's absurd, actually. The entire game is is oh, yeah, it's very much ridiculous <laughs> and makes no effort to hide its uh, flair or peculiarity whatsoever. Yeah. No, not at all. But uh, anyway, going back to this, Bloodborne, RJ and Nate, uh, I, RJ, you streamed it. Mm-hmm. This is your first time playing your PS4. Uh, first time. Uh, well. I know it's the first time streaming bit, little, with your first PS4. Time with the PS4. I did a little bit of a uh, Guilty Gear on it, but nothing too much, like maybe five, ten minutes of it, trying to get the feel of the system. Yeah. But uh, this is the first time I've actually. Hey, since sat you've been gone, James, RJ PS4. got a PS4. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's. <laughs> I th- you know what? Did did everybody stop nagging him for like five minutes? And it was in that five minutes that he upgraded. I I have no idea. We had, we were talking about I don't know how it came up, but you just. Threw it out there one of the episodes, saying, "Oh, I picked up a PS4," mm-hmm. and I was like, "And this is oh well, what?" And we had to go back to to talk to you about that. Yeah. So, Bloodborne. How do you? I liked your stream. I watched. I watched streams most of the day, mm-hmm. and then I watched your stream. You're the only one that I watched, and I didn't watch a lot of streams. I basically stuck with one person while they streamed, rather than going yeah. stream to stream, stream. Yeah, there are a ton of them. Yeah, um, yeah I know. Uh, I also looked at. YouTube videos of it as well because I got tired of um, seeing somebody stand around for a while and go through their management. I just kind of wanted to see mm-hmm. some of the highlights and some of the high points of the game and I watched a bunch of YouTube videos of people playing it and nobody handled that first boss or mini boss, whichever one it is, the one on the bridge. Uh, cleric Beast. Yes. Nobody handled it like you did and got through it in one fight without mm-hmm. dying. Mm-hmm. You were the first person I saw to get through it without dying the first try. Hmm. So I was like, oh, this is good. He knows what he's doing. I mean, it's you, obviously. Yeah, but it's a lot of experience playing the previous, uh, uh, playing a lot of the Soul series. How know, did you do with that first fight, Nate? I uh, died the first time and then waited till I was level 20 to fight him again. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I guess, a good strategy to have. Yeah, I just, mm-hmm. I just farmed souls until I got to 20, and then I... 
I probably hit him like six, seven times, and then he died. Well, you farmed souls? Mm-hmm. Or blood. Whatever, blood, <laughs> uh, blood echoes. Same thing. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's calling them souls, but they're blood echoes. I don't know. Go ahead. Tell us about, uh, I mean, what are your thoughts on the game, RJ? It's, uh, I know, I understand a lot of people have a lot just compared it to Dark Souls because of the uh, similarity in the same company. Yeah, but it's a lot of similarities between the two, so it's pretty much standard fare. I mean, it's the same difficulty that I felt in Demon Souls. You know how they say Dark Souls? The this, this Dark Souls series has been more, a little more toned down a bit, but uh, in Bloodborne, I felt that the difficulty was uh, picked up a bit. Hmm. Picked up more in this one than uh, than the previous uh, than the previous games. And Dark Souls 2. Yeah. yeah, the Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2. Uh, little nuances here that I did notice, like for instance, how you picked up items and you were stuck with the you were only st- stuck with a certain amount that you could have, but uh, now you keep picking up items and they get stored back in the uh, your uh, the hunter's dream, basically the, your way station before going to any other place. There any any extra items that you pick it, up and now put Nexus, back basically. in uh, yeah they're put back in the um, in the storage facility, so they're always there for you. So you can just keep picking up items over and over and okay, over again. Okay, that's that's interesting because that. That was one of my frustrations playing Dark Souls 1, too. It's yeah. like I would eventually run out of storage space. Well, mm-hmm. Carrying space. Carrying space. So, yeah. Don't, so, don't worry about picking about we're doing that. You just put them back in the uh, back in the storage area. Another thing that gets that uh, that I really liked was, um, <clears throat> well, some people didn't, is how when you die and you go back to go pick up your blood echoes, or mm-hmm. souls as everyone's calling them, there are some times where you can find the spot that you died, pick them back up, the standard fare. There are also times where an enemy in the area will pick them up for themselves. <laughs> so now you have to find that enemy who, who took your uh, who took your blood echoes. And it's it always is. a giveaway. It's the one with the glowing blue eyes. If you find the enemy with the glowing blue eyes, they've got your, and they've it, got your it, blood echoes. Is it the same rules as uh, the Souls game where if uh, you die again, you lose if those If you die again, you lose that spot again because that's happened to me um, mm-hmm. already uh, my <laughs> second time playing through. But, yeah, you've got to, uh, if you can't find the spot where you died, you're going to have to go back there and find the person who took them. So that's a that's a hunt in and of itself as in and of itself as well. Um, going in blind, um, trying to figure out little things like how to upgrade my weapon, uh, get yeah, certain things. This is the other thing I noticed about gets. your stream that I want to pick point out is that yeah. unlike everybody else, you avoided death as much as you could in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Whereas the game is, I don't know if that's spoiler or not, but I mean you're supposed to die. Yeah, you're um, supposed to. Because I watched you go through past that first enemy, and mm-hmm. you actually got out into this area, and you were walking around, and you were doing your best with just doing your hand chops mm-hmm. as much <laughs> as you could to, to do some damage, Yeah, and you couldn't do anything. And you did kept, I kept hearing you say something like, there's got to be some weapons around here somewhere. you got to eventually get some weapons. I mean, yeah. Oh, this is not going very well. And you would, you would evade as much as you could, man. And then finally. Finally, I bought it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you thought, oh, I guess you're supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. And then. And then you wandered around, I don't know what it's called, the Hunter's Dream? Hunter's Dream. Yeah, you Hunter's wandered Dream. around that place forever. You did exactly what I would do, which is basically explore every oh, yeah. search before you leave. Yeah, that's the thing about it. Search, look around, see what you can, uh, see what you can uh, pick up from, your, from the area and yeah. uh, learn, how to learn, learn everything you can before venturing off. Because in the, the Hunter's uh, Dream the is where you get your weapons. Yeah, Hunter's Dream is where you get uh, your first uh, two weapons, your sidearm and your uh, bladed weapon. Yeah. That's where you get them from. So yeah, you have to. But yeah, uh, they, each of them has like a, each of the melee weapons has like a transformation. Mm-hmm, yeah, your trick weapon, your trick okay. weapon. And well, the hunter like I pick the hunter's axe. The the trick is it extends, so it has a longer range and two handed. I think the uh, the uh, other ones you have at the beginning is the threaded cane, which is basically you use it like a sword, a short sword. But if you uh, activate this trick, it's a sword whip. So it's hmm. like a like a long uh, long whip. It gives you a lot of range. Couldn't charge it though, like I could the other weapons. So that that was uh, interesting to me. Normally you can charge your weapon and get a bright flash and get a more powerful attack, but for some reason I couldn't do it. And it's uh, in the threaded cane's trick form. Is it just like a timing issue or no? It's just uh, the just longer not... you hold it, uh, the bigger the charge. And when it finally charges up fully, it lets it rip. Okay. So it's a, yeah. So uh, get the bright uh, get the right timing down to uh, start your charge up and then let it go when you have to. Um. The other things, uh, see, the reason I was trying to uh, go through that first part was mm-hmm. there was in, uh, I think it was in Dark Souls, where the um, the first boss you fight in the prison, uh, there was a bonus you got if you took it out with the limited weapons that you have. Uh, I think oh, you have yeah, a broken yeah. sword, and that's all you have. If you took that uh, that uh, that's demon the out, the asylum demon, yeah, yeah, the asylum demon, you got his weapon. 
Of course, you'd have to be level uh, 60 or 70 something to do it because you had to have at least 50 units of strength to swing that thing around properly. Mm -hmm. So uh, later on, I've tried to do it in um, my second playthrough, tried to do it in the same uh, area when you first wake up. And I did manage to take it out. You can charge up your chop. If you hit an enemy from behind, it gets them in stun. If you put them in stun, you walk up to a visceral attack, which is basically your character putting his hand, his or her hand in the opponent and ripping something out. Mm. It takes about, um, if I remember right, 301, 302 hit points off the enemy, and it kills it instantly. instantly. But I didn't get anything but three blood vials, so that was a waste of there. I thought we'd get something special after that, but apparently not. But um, going through the game... Um, a lot of similarities to Dark Souls. I'm having a good time with it. I really like the difficulty. I know a lot of people are going to get frustrated from the um, dying because you're going to do it a lot. Apparently, I'm finding out now uh, in the second part, I'm in Old Yarnum now, and I'm going through a lot of uh, tougher enemies, tougher uh, situations, and I'm dying a lot more than normal, and I'm losing a lot of uh, blood vials because of that, so I'm going to have to take my time and go through it like every other Dark Souls, every other Dark Souls game I've played. Blood vials. What, what is that equivalent? That's to? basically the Estus flask. Okay, something so that health restore, health, rest health, health restoration. They're not automatically replenished, though. They must be farmed. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can farm they have them. To, they have yeah. to really have to be farmed. You farm them just like the other things. If you get excess, they go back into storage. You can store up to ninety nine of them, but you can hold at the most twenty. So uh, you've got to uh, farm them, like you said. But uh, I did not know that. Yeah, go. Yeah, go through the first uh, well, first no, stage I, in Central Yarn and do it. I didn't know that they went back to your storage. Yeah, there's because a store. I, yeah, when you open up the storage uh, area, when you beat when you beat the cleric beast, mm -hmm. he opens up the uh, doors to the hunter's dream, and you'll see your storage area. Yeah, well, I'm just saying I didn't yeah. know that the the extra one because I I'm almost always at twenty. Yeah, I, I, and that was actually one complaint I kind of have is mm -hmm. that I never, I'm always at twenty vials. Oh, you'll run out eventually. Get, get, mean, get further along in the game, you're going to start I mean, running I know, out. But yeah. I mean, it also kind of helps that I tried to over level the areas I am. I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so far, just doing the first two bosses, I was like, I kind of wish I had less health. But, mm -hmm. that was just me. but I picked the solo guy as well, so I could have more health. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. you know what I'm talking about? The, the uh, classification, I believe. Yeah. You picked, uh, I picked uh, Lone Survivor. Yeah, I think I that's, that's that what I picked, yeah. Okay. So that the, one, there's yeah, other, the classes there, just, it's just arbitrary. It just, just determines what your... A starting stats are. Yeah, uh, I think one stream I saw okay. someone did put waste of skin, which is the equivalent of the uh, depraved, de deprived, deprived. In, yeah, uh, the basically start with nothing. Start with basically nothing. Yeah, but um, it's the uh, I'm having a, I'm having a really good time with this one. The difficulty and all is right right where I like it. Like gives me a throwback to uh, Demon Souls and whatnot. I mean the backgrounds are the background in the area that you're fighting in is really they really stuck the Victorian old Gothic look that they've had in there. Now, the one thing that really gets me about the game is the low times. They are mm, yeah, decidedly been a, noticeable been just a when playing few through this game. On the internet about I that. mean, uh, yeah, that's a, yeah, the, another another drawback to dying is having to wait through that low time to get everything up and <laughs> that, running again. That's encouragement right there. Yeah, I is, know. Is there, <laughs> is there something similar to like a soul form or uh, the uh, – Undead form from Dark Souls. No, like after you die. You no, just, you, you just, just uh, back up. you just go back to uh, you go back to uh, Hunter's Dream and re uh, go back to that Nexus. Go back to your activation uh, tombstone and go back to the areas that you've uh, been to, the uh, mm, lamps okay. that you have to light up. That uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's a long gaps in between spaces where the lamps are, as opposed to bonfires in uh, Dark Souls. I mean, you gotta have to go a long way to find how, another. How, uh, how far are you? Light. I'm in a, like I said, I'm in Old Yarnum right now. I'm in the spot where I'm trying to, um, uh, spoiler territory if anybody's uh, looking out for it. There's a gunman in the top tower of Old Yarnum. Mm -hmm. Well, I shouldn't say gunman. More like a, more like he's got a minigun up there. There's a guy with the Gatling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. up there. So I've been, I finally I've found a way, yeah, yeah. 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 way to get to him, finally. But um, I had a little, uh, I'm having difficulty getting there. Yeah, it's, uh. I'm trying to get the timing of the um, gunshot. So I'm, I'm using the blunder. I'm using the blunderbuss because it has a wide range. It does do a lot of damage, but I'm not. I don't have the gun for damage. Really, that's the thing about the game. The gun's not there for damage. It's yeah. your parry. It's, the, it's your parry, basically. Yeah. Just for pulling people. Yeah. Mm. So um, I'm What's trying for interrupting? to get, Yeah. So I'm trying to get the right timing down, which I haven't got it yet. But uh, get the right timing down to get that stun, so I can get some real damage. It's been on them. it's been interesting to me uh, watching people play because literally 
uh, everyone on Twitch is apparently required by law to be playing Bloodborne right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, click a random Twitch stream, they're going to be playing Bloodborne. Mm -hmm. um, it's been very f interesting to watch it over the course of the first week, because uh, in addition to people who have played all of the other Souls games and are, are fans of one aspect or another of Souls games, uh, or for people who are, uh, you know, absolutely whatever, the hype is what it is, and that's what people do. They buy games based on hype a lot of times. Uh, and this game has received an awful lot. Mm -hmm. uh, deserved in a lot of cases, but whatever. It's, it's neither here nor there. There are an enormous number of people playing this game who are not necessarily interested in it because of its mechanics, mm -hmm. which I find to be really ab about the only reason to be interested uh, in something like this, like really, really, really interested in it, enough to spend the $70 on it. But what's funny is I, I saw almost no one understanding how to use the gun. I watched probably 40, 50 different streams for a significant amount of time, and nobody understood what it was for. It's a gun. It's supposed to be killing the whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. They'd use it to finish off the last couple of hit points, uh, or they'd use it to, to shoot something really weak, like a, like a dog or something. And there was this constant, um, they wouldn't verbalize, but there was this constant obvious confusion amongst the players about what they were supposed to be doing. Nobody, it's like no one really wanted to engage with the game the way that it needed you to. That gun serves essentially one purpose. It is your parry. It's your parry, it's, yeah. But parrying as a style of combat, even when it's something that other games provide, like when Dark Souls provided it, or you mentioned it earlier, uh, Metal Gear Rising, mm -hmm. its combat is based almost entirely around parrying. There's no shield, yeah. there's no blocking. So in a game like that, you have dodge, you can get out of the way, or you can parry. Um, Getting out of the way doesn't help you... Getting out of the way is easier. Yeah. So all yeah. I saw was a bunch of people like fast dodging all over the place until they could figure out how to attack. And there was an awful lot of failure because of that. Parrying requires so much timing that mm -hmm. even the people who understood the gun was designed only as a parry, only as, a, uh, as an interrupt uh, to give you an opportunity to attack better. One, one failure with a parry, one, one piece of bad timing would often result in just your death outright. Yeah, which meant that people were not. They weren't I learning think the they lesson. Weren't, they weren't learning the lesson because yeah. it was <laughs> the lesson was was very harshly delivered, and so use my gun, I die. <laughs> the number of people I see streaming, uh, or the number of videos I've seen on YouTube of people playing who just are ignoring the gun, because the skill ceiling, the skill level, yeah. for properly using the gun for what it's meant to be used for is very high. Yeah, the time of the times I've used it, like I said, trying to trying to get the timing down for the parry attack, or if uh, if a mob is approaching, uh, slow them down to give you time to uh, yeah. to recuperate. Um, dodging, um, you get that brief window of in invincibility. That's how you use mm -hmm. that. But if you keep fast dodging all the time, you're going to be out of stamina quick. Right. And if you're out of stamina, you can't attack, and then you're uh, wide open. But also, um, another thing that gets me is um, the uh, rally rallying system. Yeah. If you take damage, you can you can get some back. You can if get you it back. Immediately yeah. hit hit them back. So if you're out of stamina, you can't swing your is weapon that, anymore. Is that, to do that new for for? Yeah, I was gonna ask. Yeah, that. that's new. Okay. That's yeah. New well, it's yeah. I mean, I don't want to say that it's new for a Souls game because it's it isn't just that it's new. Yeah. It's this is this is where I think it's worthwhile to to actually take a take a detour and talk about the ways this is not a Souls game mm -hmm. because everybody's like, oh, it's a Souls game. It's hard because it's a Souls game. It's this thing because it's a Souls game. It uses Blood vials, but they're flasks. It uses whatever blood echoes, but they're souls because it's a souls game. Yeah, a lot of similarities game. there. Yeah, but really, really, if you push it through a sieve, right? If you wipe away everything about it that feels thematically like a souls game, it really isn't that much of a souls game. It, it just, it just isn't. So much of its core mechanics don't really align with what the other three games were doing. The difficulty level. Uh, the, the quality in terms of like what the actual melee combat is. Mm -hmm. You can have an encounter with an enemy or a boss or something and be like, yeah, that's, that's felt just like a Souls game. But if you really look at it more broadly, you see that it's, it is a much, much, much more focused, more tailored uh, kind of, it's going to sound more negative than I mean it to, but a much narrower experience. A much, much more narrow experience. Uh, there are virtually no 
real options for like what kind of person you want to be, how you want to approach combat. Combat in this game works the way it works. Mm -hmm. Your gun is your parry. You got your one-handed weapon. It could transform into a two-handed weapon for your stronger attacks into your AOEs and stuff like that, at which point you're relying entirely on dodge because you don't have your gun. It's very no good. So, no, 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 no shield, shield so, yeah. no blocking, no ranged combat. Again, even though you have a gun, there's, I'll say no, there's, ranged no, there's combat. no equivalent to like pyromancy and the like. No. Or, no. Mm. It is a very, very focused, very, and I, I think that's a good thing uh, for various yeah. reasons. But it does not really accommodate what I feel was a much broader set of options in, the, in all of the other games. You really had choices about how you wanted to approach things. And uh, truth be told, every encounter has to be balanced against every possible way that you can approach the encounter, yeah? Mm -hmm. So by not having so many options, uh, your balance and your timing and your development can be much more focused and you can, in certain ways, get a much better experience. Mm -hmm. um, that is, though, I think at the heart of why I, I, I swerved away from it. I was totally focused on it. I was really interested in it. I have played uh, Demon Souls and Dark Souls 1. I have not played 2. Mm -hmm. Um Though I think I will be picking up the re-release. Mm -hmm. um, but I realized I had to be very honest with myself. Watching what people were doing, I can say, I'm very happy that everybody's enjoying this. I can see why it is good. But I fundamentally disagree that this game is, by its nature, just better than the other things. That it is the next evolution of Souls games. I disagree. I think that it's very cool that it's gone a slightly different direction. But it is missing the things I personally found most enjoyable about Dark Souls. And I really, really liked Dark Souls. I loved the setting. I think it's got possibly some of the best world building I have ever seen in mm. my life. Some of the most intelligent um, level design. I was going to, yeah. That and was, like, every time I watched the stream, I was paying more attention, honestly, to the background the world the the building bloodborne? The, the bloodborne yeah mm -hmm. it's very uh consistent yeah yeah it's always <laughs> the same for the most part very broad and again the environment has has been developed uh, with the same kind of focus intent narrow sort of scope that that i think the combat has as well and and again i think that's fine i just had to be very honest with myself that that's not what i'm interested in the 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 variation uh both in play style and environment although you know it isn't like there are are happy sunshiny you know fields of clover in dark souls but i felt mm -hmm. like the the environment was something i i preferred a little bit but the rpg mechanics just the the vast and varied different ways i could approach combat were things that i enjoyed about dark souls one that i don't they're just not they're not present in bloodborne mm -hmm. And it just was not enough for me to spend money on. I'm going to play it when I can get my hands on a rental copy or borrow someone else's copy. Mm -hmm. But this was not... I just had to recognize that this is not... I, I don't want this right now. This is not... I have no... A very strong like kind of urge and yen for a, an RPG right now. And it wouldn't you know it. <laughs> One of those came <laughs> along just in time. But I, I don't... I just... I feel like the conversation, generally speaking... Not in this room, obviously, but, but out there is very much focused on how Bloodborne is the current Alpha and Omega. It is the best thing. It is the, the it is incredible in every way and improves in every way on, on the Souls formula. What are, what are your... And I say, that's yeah. not true. What are your thoughts on it there, Nate? Um, well, I'll say uh, the only one I ever played was uh, Dark Souls, the first one. I, it's the only one I've played. Yeah. Um, and I played it on Xbox. Yeah, on Xbox. Uh, and I got past the fifth boss, I believe, but I never beat it. But I, mean, I got fairly far into it enough to, you know, mm -hmm. understand what I was doing. And I'll say this one off the back, I find easier in the sense that, uh, as uh, James was saying, there's less to do directly involved with your characters. Is that what you were saying, James? Yeah, there is. I mean, there's you. You've got this kind of weapon that does this yeah. sort of thing. One of them is like more direct damage. One of the, you know, like the yeah. the, the the threaded cane is going to mm -hmm. give you a lot of like rapier type attacks until you switch it over to the whip, which means that then you're doing like, you know, big sweeping AOE stuff that has a lot of range, uh, which is really good in certain ways. But then there's like the axe, which apparently now everybody has decided is the best thing in the world. Um, 
and it looks certainly really, really swell. But but that's about it. You know, there are small variations in terms of how those things work, and Is, they they are there. But are there any? St- are there stats? I mean, is, no, there, yeah, there, there are stats. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was actually, stats. Why I, that was actually okay. the only reason I picked the axe because it came with the most damage. And right. I prefer and I, slower weapons that do more damage. And that's again, that's, you know, that's great, but mostly they're just governing, like, uh, uh, I think your stamina regeneration and stuff, and, and mm-hmm. largely, like, uh, different weapons scale uh, to different degrees with different stats. Okay. Which yeah. is a very Souls game. Yeah, same thing. Like, uh, so. some weapons. Uh, give benefits determining how much dexterity you have another weapon is determined give you benefits determine how much strength you have yeah that yeah. that's similar to souls but it's, yeah. uh, losing out stuff like magic and the like you know you don't have stats yeah. governing that yeah, so. and i mean like i you know i'll go ahead and expose myself if everybody wants to bag on me and call me a turtle but i liked shield gameplay i liked heavy slow yeah, that, yeah. I, I i liked that kind of gameplay not just because the shield was safer but i i like that sort of archetype in a character sort of i mean i uh, uh, i yeah. gotta admit the first i admit the first the first shield i'm going for is a tower shield yeah because that thing is big it's heavy and it makes enemies back off when they swing and hit you. right and yeah. it does and, and in uh dark souls i didn't I actually didn't do sword and board i did a uh, um shield uh, and pike ah yes you know spear and yeah. i really really liked that attack I mean, while attack while defending they can't right. they can't hit you while you're poking them yeah but it but even though it results in a much heavier type of character it's kind of a more deliberative yes i admit a slower type of gameplay and the fast gameplay is fun too but like i said options and they're just not as many on the table but that's fine if this represents a different spur on, on their on their souls development line that where they bloodborne goes off this way and they do their thing and we still get a dark souls 3 all the better for everyone, I say. Mm-hmm. But I don't think Bloodborne's my thing. Yeah, but you're enjoying what you're playing, RJ. Yes, I'm having a good time. And with it. you're enjoying what you're playing. Nate? I prefer it over Souls. You prefer it over Souls? Well, yes. great. Well, oh, well, I got to mention this thing. Um, it's almost a tradition from From. Uh, did you see the note, Nate, about the uh, Bergamort spider? Yes, I did. I saw that. I was like, Craig, spiders are back. By the way, did, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask, did you get the flame flower? No, I didn't. I got the uh, flame paper, the thing to just, uh, I could put on my weapon to make it, li- light it on fire. You know the very first town, did, did you know there's a guy in the window that gives you things? Um, is this the man in the, uh, you can't see him, he's in there yeah. coughing, sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I've talked to him, but I haven't done anything go, else. Go back to talk to him. He, he gives you weapons and emotes and stuff. Okay, well, I'll have to check that out then. And, and then there's another lady, uh... Where you run into the, the first time you kind of run into the werewolves, like there's mm-hmm. there's a opening behind the door and there's another person and she gives you a uh, uh, humility is it humility, I uh, and uh, an emote to no 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 the uh, to like be able to have people to summon people like to your uh what, what's that uh, uh the, the the bell, not the like what do you use with the bell you have to have ten of it ten of them uh yeah I'm forgetting forgetting whatever. Well, anyway, she gives you five of whatever those are. I can't think of any of so, so basically just look for more people around town to give you stuff yeah, and items. The, and there's, okay. there's, but the, I haven't used the flamethrower yet, but I think it'll be handy. Okay. It'll be, it's your offhand weapon. Okay. I'll have to check around for that. Yeah. Uh, somebody in the chat room. Insight, yes. Yes. Insight. Uh, mm-hmm. mentioned that it was insight. Anyway, uh, we've got to take a break. When we come back, uh, we may have some more Bloodborne, but we'll be going into Pillars of Eternity, which is exactly... Uh, kind of how this week uh, exactly went with game releases. And uh, we'll be talking about that uh, next on the show. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more in-game chat in just a moment. Here is music from Silent Hill.
And welcome back to in-game chat. Music from Chrono Trigger. That is Lavos' theme, and Lavos is hanging out in the chat room there uh, right now as well. So, thanks to Abrexus, AC Wraith, uh, Drunk Degenerates, well, that's a great name, Duke Frukum 2, Jaraxxus, Ghibli Fungi, Jimmy the Saint, Cali Synth, Leopold Kane, uh, Tactus 59, The Was Man Returns, Truffle Snout, and W.S. Matthew, also Medusa's Mirror, Lavos, uh, hanging out in the chat room. We appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys joining us uh, today for this episode of In Game Chat. We were in the middle of Bloodborne talk, and originally, like I had said, I thought I was all set for Bloodborne, and then I turned away from it, uh, a lot like James did. James, probably a lot more valid of a reason than mine, which was just uh, mine being, this already isn't a game that is in my kind of wheelhouse, but I do want to try it because everybody else is going to be playing it. I figured that's the game we're going to be talking about. That's why all the cool kids are playing seems to be yeah. uh, and all and the not cool kids too by the way it seems to be what everybody is playing mm -hmm. and I thought I was going to be on that uh, that train as well and it just it just didn't sit with me it really just did not sit with me I just I was like no I can't I'm not gonna sure I'll go I, I can do that rental thing that I got at Best Buy but I'm I don't know just not I'm, I don't think yeah, I'm gonna if you're already it. having that feeling even before you yeah. picked it up it's it was already like coming from Gamefly so I thought I can hold off on this and just wait till my Gamefly copy comes and I can put my time in with it then. My Gamefly copy showed up on Thursday, which is actually the day, same day that another game released. That is also not necessarily in my wheelhouse either. Yeah. Pillars of Eternity is much further outside of your wheelhouse. It's over the horizon. Of it is, wheelhouse. isn't it? So James tells me about Pillars of Eternity. I see its paradox. I'm like, oh, well, let me... Published by Paradox. Published, Published by, by Paradox, Paradox. Developed by Obsidian yeah. Entertainment. And I, you know, I got in touch with them, and I thought... Oh, and they're having a really you know, good month. They're having the a way, great they? month. I mean, Just if, a if little you wanna, bit. If you want to judge by nothing other than the uh, top sellers on Steam. Yeah. Uh, because City Skylines was there for, you know, a, a while. A couple, a couple few weeks. For an eternity. Now hovers, I think, at uh, two or three. And uh, I think uh, the day that Pillars of Eternity came out, it was number one on the Steam sellers. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, at least for a while. Yeah, uh, GTA Skylines 5, was... Pills of Eternity, then see Skylines. Okay. Yeah. Right, G so it takes something like GTA 5, <laughs> right, which can mm -hmm. generally uh, suck the oxygen out of any room it walks into. And it takes some, so it takes something of that, you know. Well, they've been juggling path. that position. It's been Pillars and GTA sharing the top spot. They switch back from being number one and number two. Right. With cities being at number three of course before this it was cities up there at the top but regardless though a, a really paradox has two games in the top three for them yeah i mean this is a this is i don't think they i don't think they usually get this kind of attention that i'm aware of i again obviously this is coming from the experience of not really paying much attention to no, them i mean until, not generally uh, generally they they produce uh you know more esoteric mm -hmm. war game i was telling i, I think you were out of the room things. at the time but i was telling them my my previous experience with paradox was just magica that was pretty mm -hmm. much it, as far as what I knew of them. So uh, now they've got uh, City Skylines out there published, and they've also got Pillars of Eternity published. Although Pillars of Eternity, that's great that Paradox picked it up. I think anybody could have uh, jumped on this and been successful with the publishing. It's not so much the publisher behind it, it's the developers yeah, behind the it. Yeah, the city and uh, a lot, I, I a lot would, of like guys. I would only dispute that uh, to say that... Um, it, it would seem very much that Paradox's style is like, oh, yeah, we know, like, we know what you are. We know what this is here. Mm -hmm. Like, you do what you want to do. Do whatever you want to do. Right. That was a stupid off. thing of me to say because immediately I so started thinking about. So many other publishers would, would. I started thinking about EA, Activision, and a couple right. of others out there that would do the same thing. Not even thing the big thing. Just the, they're just like, okay, well, if we're going to put our name on it, then we want to have some kind of influence over, over what it even is. The, even the smaller yeah, guys. We want, people, we want the EA watermark on this game. We well, even right. the smaller ones. Even, even people that may be on the equal uh, level as Paradox or even lesser than that might not be willing to take that risk. And say, ah, I know that I, I know we need that gap filled from what SimCity did, but we need it to be as close to SimCity as you can make it because that's that's been what's proven to work, even though it failed this mm -hmm. last time. Rather than saying, do it your own way, go do your own thing, and and you know, I same with Obsidian saying that we know your we know your history of this, you guys know how to do this, go do it. Um, instead of saying, ah, that's not really the thing that's popular right now. Switch, can we put something else in there to to make it? Add some co-op. 
add uh, uh, what's the what's the word when or not randomly generated, but um, procedurally generated. procedurally yeah, add some procedurally generated. Uh, content through this thing, and, and j- that's, I, that's I would have I would have expected uh, um, honestly if someone with a much heavier hand uh, was publishing this, I would the kind of things I would expect them to change would be uh, uh, don't just lower the difficulty or make lower difficulty options, but but give us the ability to essentially um, reduce a lot of what the content is in the game. Right? We, you just got it's too wordy. You just got to cut out some of these words. You got you got to cut Which this out. Which would be a crime. Well, it would it would absolutely be a crime. But if you want to go out there to even mm-hmm. a very well-meaning conversation uh, on Reddit or NeoGAF or or the like, you will find people in the official threads for these games saying like, "Ah, oh, just, you know, blah blah blah, dumb words, dumb words, you know, I don't want to read a book when I play a video game." <sighs> And you get that kind of thing. And, like, generally, yeah, I understand you got your tastes and everything, but you should go very far away from this game. This game is absolutely what it needs to be. Uh, because this is I... what these kinds of games always are. But there are an enormous number of people complaining about things yeah. like that. And there's I, – I don't know what the word count is, what the line count is in this game, but it's astonishing. It's, it's astonishing. It is a hugely wordy thing. This game, this is based on, on – D and D combat rules. It's an original mm-hmm. universe. It's not anything very particular, but it is very much mechanically uh, like uh, Baldur's Gate, and mm-hmm. it is meant to be in every real way. Not so much a video game. This is a D and D adventure where Obsidian is essentially sitting in the role of the dungeon master, and you are playing your character. You are going through your story. It's going to be incredibly wordy because the game itself isn't doing a tremendous amount of effort to paint the world for you. It's got lovely graphics. It's got a lot of locations. But it's part of building the world of an RPG of this style is to have tens of thousands of words. Yeah, it's the storytelling is what makes the adventures memorable. Could it also be the choices? Oh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. but but again, to have significant choices, we've talked about this in the past. The simple act of having a single decision, everybody loves for their choices to matter, or or more than that, they like to complain when their choices don't matter. Mm-hmm. But the resources necessary for a single choice to branch in any two different directions, even if it's just a simple line of dialogue, choice is expensive, right? In terms of of resources and development. Yeah, yeah. And then but when co- you're yeah, and then but it when comes you have to. Oh well, we developed half this game that nobody's right. going to see because they weren't a dark side, and that's a that's a huge problem. Ever since they've gotten better, uh, largely through achievement tracking, at figuring out what people do and what they don't do, why then spend an enormous amount of money developing things that people aren't really ever going to see? But this fan base, this style of game, is is something very particular and always has always drawn a, a certain type of player, someone who really wants to play through a novel, play through. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a, a months long uh, weekend only D and D session. That's exactly what this is. The, the whole thing is the story, um, which is why a lot of people are saying that you know the combat is fine, the combat system seems perfectly good, uh, yeah, but, but it, it's, it's more serviceable than anything. Yeah. This is an RPG in I don't even almost the truest sense of the when word. When I was talking about the choices, I don't even mean some of these big significant choices, which I assume are coming up further into the game some really massive I, I imagine so. yeah i'm talking about like i'm just doing some side quest here mm-hmm. and i found out a story that's different from the story i was told to go do the side quest so i have the choice mm-hmm. now to either be like i know the real thing that happened or here take your stuff give me my money um you know i can i can play with that if i want to uh and these are just tiny things these don't i i as far as i know i don't think these are going to have some outcome later on in 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 decisions that i make yeah, further no, this, this, they're not earth, they're not earth shattering no but they're it, it's the fact that i have that option no, no, you you do it's not just it's not a it's not a it's not an empty option it's yeah. not an empty gesture what you look at what you have in a game like this are choices that matter in a way that they don't matter in other styles of games yeah. it's about how people perceive you later it's about how the world reacts to you as a person some small choice you make in some side quest where it's you interacting with a with a merchant or a thief or or some semi sentient, you know, troglodyte animal thing, <laughs> like it doesn't matter how you behave towards it affects the people around you. It isn't going to change the course of of time and nature. Mm-hmm. 
but it is going to have an effect on the people around you. And that is going to give you other options. It's going to open some doors. It's going to close others. That's what it's about. It's about the subtle nature mm -hmm. of playing a role, of, of inhabiting a person and being able to play them significantly different than anything else. And to be fair, this is exactly the kind of thing that led us to the place that uh, Knights of the Old Republic and Mass Effect and those types of games eventually develop a much more lavish uh, visual experience yeah. mm -hmm. with a much, 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 yeah, much narrower uh, story experience. Yeah, because you uh, can... Man, Renegade Shepard does not compare to an evil Renegade Shepard just punches people yeah. when he's tired of their crap. That's uh, all he does. Playing, playing through Planescape Torment as an evil character is the most mortifying, just you feel sick about it because of the just the narration you're getting back you know telling somebody yeah you get to be a zombie because i want your money things like that yeah that's not that's like the first side quest when you get into the big city there's mm. like worse and worse things you can do if you're playing an evil character it's just like oh. yeah well it, I, it's, I, no, it's good I, yeah. stuff all I of that is up. really good stuff i picked it up and started playing it on thursday when it released it uh took me just a it took a little while to work uh, for me. To uh, work for you? To, 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 to pull my interest. Yeah. So to get me drawn in is what I mean. Game works. Game's easy to work. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. it, it took a while for it to sink a hook. And it f really finally has now that, my, now that I've got more of my crew, um, I'm understanding the, the, the way it works. Yeah, because there's no party AI as far as I can tell. No. You, you are you are in command of each individual member of your party, which I think goes up to six. If I th yeah, I think it so. Does, and it is uh, for anybody that doesn't know, it is a uh, um, active time combat with uh, pause. Yeah, that is, mm -hmm. it's a very specific thing, and I know it seems weird. A lot of people don't like it. Or real time combat with pause, I guess I should say, is what it's what it's called. Infinity engine. Is yeah, that infinity true? engine stuff. It's incredibly spammy. Incredibly, like a, a, a single battle, you're going to be pausing. Just, you know, killing three spiders, you're likely to pause seven or eight times. Mm -hmm. In a bigger battle, you'll pause 30, 40 times, you know. You pause, issue a bunch of commands, unpause for a second, see what happens, pause again, issue more commands. Very detail-oriented. Um, not, there are no giant flourishes for attacks. I mean, spell effects and everything are pretty, but this is about, it's a cerebral game, I guess, you know. Uh, a, a lot of the action is about what's happening in your head. Yeah, both with your understanding of the story and your uh, micromanagement of all the activities in the game. But uh, it is good. It is going to take some time since you don't know. You can't look back in your head and think like this is this is fantastic. This is Obsidian, and I've loved everything Obsidian has done. And this is them uh, developing a modern take on an incredibly old and brilliant style of game, which I have played a lot of. You have none of that. Mm -hmm. The game actually has to prove itself to you. Um, it, it'll do that with the story. You are playing on easy, right? Yes. No yeah. shame in that, by the way. No, you would, no, you would, no, that's perfectly I don't feel, fine. I don't feel you, bad about that You at all. would bounce off of it, I think. I read exactly. I mean, I was were. reading the whole thing where it says, you know, I clicked or I hovered over easy, and it's like, hey, if this style of game is new to you, play this. Yeah, I, I so started on I easy as well just because I, didn't, I didn't want to take a lot of time being like, okay, I have to understand all these mechanics, figure right. out all this, where these abilities slot in, what needs to be done. Right here's like, I, I just want to play this game right now. Yeah, I'll, wor I'll worry about doing a hard mode trial of iron. Yeah, path of yeah, the damn yeah. later. <laughs> and this game is, uh, if I could sum it up, these kinds of games have always been. They are thoroughly like uh, passionately offline games. Mm -hmm. Very very personal experiences. They are the book you curl up with on the couch on a rainy day. That's what this is. You open it up and you dive into it and you swim down into it. Yeah. And you live with it. We we did talk earlier about the fact that you can pop in and out of the game uh, relatively easily. You know, uh, saves and quick saves. Um, nothing is ever, nothing is unskippable. You know, you can always get in and out of the game pretty easily. Mm -hmm. But the game itself is really, really meant to be, it's, it's a meal of a game. And you're going to put anywhere from... I would say probably 40 hours at an absolute minimum 
And that's, uh, a, that's if you're rushing through. Not yeah, that's that's anything. at a total minimum, uh, all the way up to probably about 100 hours. I think I've put already in like, like seven or eight so far. Um, and I know that number's going to go I've even. i put in like four re-rolling my character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never played an Infinity Engine game where I didn't like sort of throw away whatever character I made and go back and be like, no, nah, I'm going to do, do them a little different and do this other thing like that. So uh, it, it's great. It's a real meaty experience. It's a real deep experience. Uh, it's a commitment in a way uh, that some of these other things aren't. Uh, but it's it's pretty brilliant. You know? I'm just, I'm pleased that it works for me because honestly, I, if, uh, I'm trying to think of how I can of how to, how to word this and how to how to kind of relate it to something, but it's not a game somebody would come up to me and say, "Hey, I think you should play this. I think you'll really like it." If they know me, um, yeah, they should know that. Yeah, yeah he's n- he's probably not going to be into this. Um, so I'm glad that I was able to open up to it and give it a look and see. Seriously, watching trailers and everything else, I honestly should not be into this. Reading forums and everything else, that's a different story. Mm-hmm. Reading about people being excited about it, uh, yeah, there's been a lot. Of makes me a little bit excited about it, and so you know to try this that been out. For three years, so yeah. there's, it's had a lot of buildup. And I really had to set myself aside and say that, okay, let it do what it's going to do. Don't try and find, don't try and find what you don't like about it, or don't try mm-hmm. and find things that don't fit for you, because that'll be easy for you to oh, do. Oh man, this. where's the QTEs? Try and. <laughs> Try and try and and take this for what it's doing. Try and try and uh, uh, embrace what it's trying to do for you. Uh, so so follow its instructions. Don't try and make your own. Um, so re so I read, you know, yeah. which so, some parts I didn't have to read because the voice acting was very very good. Um, uh, and the voice act is or the voice the voices they used for these things were very very good. Um, listening to them tell the story, the narrator is very good. But uh, it is always fun to get the uh, fantasy wart salad going when they the say they're made up words. <laughs> what, yeah, w- for is just for ah, I can't all, all of your all of your uh, proper nouns and your place names and all of these other things. That, you know, all of your different types of from what do we call ghosts all the way? What do we call this region? What do we do all this other stuff? And it becomes so self referential. Uh, that it's really fun to hear yeah, it's, them. It's it's not so bad with like regular words like gilded veil, but when you get a Kerura and it like looks like yeah. some weird Celtic thing spelled right. out. Right, and there's an you can you can tell the attention to detail because every voice actor pronounces it the same way. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have made decisions about what these words actually yeah. are, what the meaning of everything here actually is. I can't understate uh, at all how much it. This isn't just this kind of game. This is Obsidian. Doing and I know you have no like yeah. you, have, you have no you have nothing there but you've heard me gush and like fawn over Obsidian mm-hmm. and make excuses for Obsidian now for about, <laughs> for about ten years uh, and this is um, speaking not necessarily in terms of quality but in terms of of ultimate expression of what they want to do because we should point out this started on Kickstarter yeah um, raised almost four million dollars right three was the uh, record nine. holder I think until torment mm-hmm. got its Kickstarter if I remember correctly. this uh, this is essentially obsidian for that particular group of people this is their masterpiece this is them doing what they wanted to do what they feel like should be put out into the world um, and they like a lot of us think that uh, pillars of eternity should have come out in 2002, 2003. Yeah, it should have been a follow-up to Torment and Ice Wind Hail. Pillars of Eternity and and, uh, games like, uh, for better or worse, uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution. I I know that's jumping way over to another place. But there was a future. We, many of us who were playing actively in the late 90s, thought the future was obvious. What games were going to be in the early part of the 21st century is incredibly obvious. They're going to be like this. They're going to be this type. Um... And they're just going to get better. They're going to look better. They're going to perform better. They're going to have a lot more interesting things in them. But they're essentially going to be this thing. And we were we were dead wrong. Mm-hmm. Many styles of game disappeared completely for <laughs> ten to fifteen years. Yeah, Deus Ex, yeah, uh, Universal Ammo. That's totally wasn't right. a decision made. And for it, the you know, we can Man. blame it on the consoles all we want to. Uh, really, we blame it on the publishers and the developers, mm-hmm. the people who decided where money was going to be spent. But um, that's essentially all behind us now. We get to pick up where we left off. In a lot of cases, 
we've realized there's enough attention and enough money to go around. And games like this were never something that people were tired of. There was always money there. So seeing Obsidian get to make this game and to be praised so well for this game, having had such a difficult road um, with all of the things they've made that have just turned out rather poor, not so much, you know, through any or fault of their own. Or at very least a not wholly undeserved reputation for uh, bugs and the like being there. Right, room. right. Well, again, I was going to ask that question because that, yeah. that's W. Matthews brought that up. He wanted to ask if it was buggy just because of Obsidian's track record with, with previous Haven't seen anything. Titles. Not yeah, really. I'm not I, that far into I, it. I, I've had, I, I think there's a couple of uh, audio sync bugs. I think uh, um, certain lines of dialogue are not being delivered when they should be, hmm. but that's about all I've seen. It's not, I don't think, a particularly pretty game. But again, that that doesn't bother me. That's not what it's trying to do. Um, but uh, I don't know. Widely, it doesn't seem to be unstable mm -hmm. or broken for anyone, really. No weird crash reports or anything yet. No, but it's only been out for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Well, that, nah, that's not true. A number of people actually so, uh, so very much like Skylines had it for, for an additional week. So I think yeah. we would have heard any reports of instability or bugs or anything like that. Regardless, I... Maybe for the first time, it seems to be absolutely everything great about Obsidian and nothing of what is sometimes bad about Obsidian. So. Yeah. Well, I have uh, I've enjoyed the time I've spent with it. I've got my group of four. I don't know how far in did you get? I got up to Gilded Vale. Yeah, the I watched town. you just a little bit take on those bandits by yourself, mm -hmm. and that taught me how to play some of my character. Yeah. What What, what are you playing? Uh, Class wise, I can't remember. <laughs> There's a lot of choices. Here's too. the problem: you don't just get to be melee guy. In it's this one. the it's the short one, but it's not the. Uh, 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 that's your race. Yeah, that's your race. What's your class? Or oh, cl what do you hit the bad guys God, with? God, class, I'm a druid. Okay. Okay. You're, so you're God. That's a weird choice for you. Well, watching yeah, that, that, that's a bit more management. Than I figured you, but hey, if it's working. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, I imagine with spell management, like, because that more so than with yeah. uh, watching my guy. the uh, again, I watched uh, not knowing where to go with this. I watched the intro. Uh, I watched somebody do some intro videos on on characters and stuff. And um, as he went over to Glu Druid, he said, "You know, uh, Druid seems to be right now the um, the not the most played class, but it, it just that's the class everybody goes with is just Druid yeah, they, seems to be the best." They do class. kind of have a. Uh, because I forget they have the uh, sh shape shifting mm -hmm. as well. And he said Druid, spells. yeah, and that's that's helped out a lot. He said Druid and Rogue seem to be the good classes to go with right now from the start. And he was doing like a beginner's guide of this thing. Mm -hmm. So my first class was a Druid, and then when I was able to make another guy, I, I made them a Rogue. Um, so Druid, Rogue, I can't remember what the other guy is because I picked him up. Uh, the, the game gave them to me. I didn't get to create him. Oh yeah. Uh, well, the, you get the fighter and the rogue in the introductory. Scene. No, no, no. This is after the introduction. Uh, scene. There's the wizard. Is that? He's a wizard. Yeah. That's what I thought. I said okay. he was. Yeah, he was. A, we we were talking about this on the way over to the show. He's, he's a wizard, the um, druid, the rogue, and barbarian. Yeah, because that as as I am in real life, I picked my the class that most represented me is the barbarian. So yeah. I went with that. Yeah, I, I the, uh, recent barbarians. Yeah, the recent yeah. the ones that people no one picks. Which Do what? The ones? What are the ones that are unpopular? The ones that people say? Oh my are God! There's so many classes, by the way. Yeah, there's yeah. there's uh, there's a lot of them. I mean, there's oh, okay. melee, there's spell casting, there's uh, even a psionic psychic uh, type called the cipher. Hmm. Uh, that actually looked really interesting. Yeah, it did. But I felt so off balance. It's been forever since I played a game like this mm -hmm. that I was like, I don't want to. Yeah, I just want something simple. I don't think I'm as good as I remember myself being. Exactly. So I'm gonna do what I do. And I'm gonna choose fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do that because I like shield bash things. Um, yeah, I was just wondering about the type that people like tend to shy away from that just uh, people don't like is not popular or anything like that. It's a little tough to tell right now, actually. Yeah, so, it, so it's pretty balanced. You mean really. it, as far as we can tell? I mean, you have yourself, but there's also you can have up to five other characters with you. Mm -hmm. So you're if whatever your uh, weaknesses are you can make it up with your other party members. Okay. So it's being locked into a particular class is not like it's not like in uh, Dark Souls or like where it's like, well, this is what you mechanically do unless you go train up something else. Mm -hmm. Like, well, let me bring my friend along and 
he'll handle the lock picking while I just like bash things in the head. Okay. Yeah, I uh Cali sent in the chat room asked if any of us had unlocked the stronghold yet. I have not. No, not yet. Nope. I think I right. yep. Uh if it's I think it is that place I mentioned because uh when I accidentally hit the button once it likes like, Hey, you don't own this place yet. Oh, okay. So that seems to be the universal place where everybody gets their stronghold. But is, is that a uh, Kerura or something like that? Uh, it's the place. It's the place you go to after the first town. Okay. Where you're supposed to go to, as far as the main mission for progress yeah. goes. Because I got, I've gotten the quest to go there. Yeah. See, I've got a quest right now, and in fact, I'm in the middle of storming the castle. Um, okay. Yeah, you're a bit further ahead than me then. Cause yeah. I done anything like that? I'm in the middle of that. It's going well at times and not well at others but thank goodness for quick saves and uh -huh. quick loads and that sort of thing so to to be able to have that that's how you do it f5 yeah. and f9 are your friends what i have run into with with being in this enclosed combat where you're having combat inside of a, a, a building that sort of thing is that you know i'll tell my characters attack and one of them again this goes to the ai of your party which there really is none now the, you, the most you, you have you are is, the AI of your party. Yeah. yeah, the most you have is auto attack, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, like I've got you know I've got the barbarian and I've got the rogue who are very they need to be close to do their things. Mm -hmm. Well, th the barbarian uh, or the rogue will get stuck behind each other and won't do anything. Hmm. So when I when yeah, I positioning is important. Yeah, when I select them and just say go attack. If one of them is in front of the other, the 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 one behind will just kind yeah, of stand there. I'll have to. Yeah, select that, that, them individually, move them to a different position. That is a thing that is yeah. important in Infinity Engines. You do have a formation setup where you yeah. can be like, you know, move in this particular path, and uh, exploring into some of that will show. Right, I need to that. get into my form. I did back when I had the three characters. Then of course you get down to one character, and there was no need for a formation. I haven't gone mm -hmm. back to it. I've got four people yeah, now. It, I would there there is a degree of micromanaging you have to do in that regard. And I don't mind. I, this, these are not complaints, by the way. These yeah. are just uh, me discovering aspects of the game. Uh, that it, it's yeah things things that in like a lava the games that kind of thing is either handheld or is not even an issue for you yeah in a way it's been fun to learn this stuff rather than be mm -hmm. told at different points of how this works i mean they give you the basics but uh, it's actually been more fun to discover again going back through uh, I, I got done with a quest and i went to talk to somebody and the option one of the options i said wait a second why would i have that option so i uh -huh. i popped open my my script and went back and read through and really paid attention to what I was reading and then that's what I understood. Oh, that's why that option's there. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. I'm yeah, some of the conversation right. options like, you know, oh, uh, you, you don't have enough of this that. I think it's a thing you can toggle. You can see the ones that are disabled for you. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, oh, you don't have 16 Resolve. You can't choose this one. It doesn't tell you what it is, but it's just like, if you had it, you'd be there. Or if you were like a particular sect of a paladin order. Well, it wasn't. Things yeah, like it wasn't necessarily that. It was just one of the options. wasn't blacked out or anything. Hmm. It just said, "Why would I? Why would that be one of my options?" So I had to go back to. Okay. Yeah. Just the, kind of a logical progression. Yeah, there, and say, "Why would I have that option?" Oh, it's because. This is why that may have happened. Maybe I could go that route, and so I did. I, it's just a lot of fun to discover mm -hmm. things like this and to go through there. It's a lot of fun to get to an enemy where it's like, "Ah, uh, that guy's going to give me a problem." Like going down into the, the the temple part of whatever it was, and in, in, in the first town, in the very first yeah, town, yeah, I haven't done that one yet. Um, I also well, did haven't gotten and fought the bear in the cave or whatever it was the, right before you get. Yeah, I went back and took care of that guy. Yeah, that's that's my next plan. I was like, I was here by that. myself before and couldn't take care of you, <laughs> but I brought four friends with me, <laughs> or three friends with me, and also I figure out that I can turn into a big wolf man now. <laughs> um, which I didn't uh, discover while I was doing that. So it's just a tons of things to, to discover while you're playing this. It's been an absolute joy to play. Uh, I've really, really, really liked it. I, those of you listening, if you know the kind of games that I play, you, um, and, and you're on the same wavelength as I am, this might be something you could be interested in. Uh, it swayed me, and it might sway you uh, as well. So give it a look. That is Pillars yeah. of Eternity. Uh, Cali Synth in the chat room mentions you can do custom formations as well. Not just uh, preloaded ones. That. Have I'll, I'll have to look into that because that's that's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we will have the final segments of the show here. We'll have more of in-game chat in just a moment. Here is a favorite piece of mine. This is from Alan Wake. This is Welcome to Bright Falls. We'll be right back.
And welcome back to In Game Chat. That is music from Ghost Recon. Final few minutes of the show here, and James has already decided to re-roll his character. Hi. So, how many have you played so far? How many characters have I made? Yeah. Four, three. Okay. So this will be number four, I guess, when you go in the uh, yeah. Did you get, yeah. Did you just re-roll over and over, or did you just get a little bit of progress into the intro quest? I No, I, I would get some progress through the intro quest right to the... Uh, the, uh, um, the point where you go by yourself? Uh, yeah, the part where it's like, you guys! <laughs> yeah! Oh, that sucks mm -hmm. a lot. Okay. Um, and then I would be like, ah, I'm going to try it again. Um, and, yeah, it's, nah, I don't know what I'm going to do. What, are your, who, what, are you, what did you pick? Barbarian. barbarian. You went barbarian. I was almost barbarian. They're so good. I, I just figure being angry guy running around, you know, mm -hmm. thick, thick head of hair, unlike <laughs> in real life. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, yeah, just, like, scream and, like, go nuts in battle. Can't keep track of my endurance. Right. It's like, oh, that's, that's uh. I can see that messing me up later. Well, and again, that's you should the fun. you should feel free to play whatever you want to play because any other you can always get another character that's going to fill mm -hmm. your need. You're never going to be without whatever you need. You yeah, really are free. And I'm sure to I'm going to re-roll a couple of times yeah. as well. I'm going to, I'm going to check out some of the other things cuz some of the conversation options are interesting cuz like, oh, if you're like I said, there was like, oh, if this is a this specific paladin order cuz as right. part of your class you get to choose like what type subtype of that class you are. Right. Uh, for uh, at least uh, a lot of the spell casting ones at the very least for the priests and paladins I think some of the other ones have some subtypes as well which just makes it interesting mm -hmm. but I, I really really want to see if there's like uh, since like alignment isn't as big as repu reputation is in this game uh, if they're like a evil paladins priest because that's that's sometimes things people want there's like kind of like playing the bad guy right is there a spectrum Mm -hmm. Or is there simply uh, how good you are at being good? Yeah. It would be really interesting. Cause, and the only penalties are based just based on your class abilities, right? It's not like you can't, you can't like progress any further in the adventure as far as I can tell. It's like if you're playing a good paladin and you be a bad guy, like your powers just whittle down to almost nothing. I think so, yeah. yeah. I, I haven't read enough to know because I don't want to – this is a game where a lot of the mechanics uh, – are, are part of the adventure. I don't want to have too much spoiled mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, that's, and that's the same thing. I, I just, like, click through everything, just going through character creation when I was mm -hmm. deciding, and that was one of the things I noticed, like, oh, well, you got this basic ability here, but, you know, if your reputation goes a certain way, it right. may not be so good. Kelly since saying it isn't so much uh, penalties as it is uh, changes what your power does. Oh. Hmm. So... Yeah, Jimmy yeah, the Saint has that question. Why do you reroll? Can you not play multiple saves? Oh no, you can. It, it's more. It's more a question of like I'm going to want like my yeah my playthrough. I you're, know you're spending know, a lot of time with this game. Yeah, I, I intend whatever my storyline is, whatever my thing is, to spend probably seventy to a hundred hours with it. So rerolling is just me going through it a little bit of time, just trying to get a sense of whether I like the guy I made or mm -hmm. not. That's all. Yeah, uh, but you absolutely can. You can. You can. Uh, you can play your saves. Is there one? Is there things. a name that you stick with for your character? Or you just oh, it depends on what they are. Okay. It, it depends on what they are. If they're a meathead, it's like this type of name. If it's if they're a, um, a, a, a usually a, a spellcaster or or a more clever character, I name them in a different way. Yeah, I only have one name when I do the long haul games, and so mm -hmm. that's the name I use every single time. Yeah, just your Steam handle. No, my City of oh. Heroes game, City of Heroes character that I used. I don't remember your Save Heroes game. You didn't play yeah. that, did you? Yes, I did. Or you did? Yeah. What Obvious. did you What did you play? What did I, I played a uh, Shadow. Uh, uh, what was your name? Scrapper. Uh, Fu Manchu. That's right. Yes, yes. that's right. <laughs> no, mine is from City of Heroes. Mobius. That's who I always okay. pick. Okay. I picked Mobius for that. I picked Mobius in. Star no, I didn't. I don't. Th no, I did go Mobius when I went Dark Side on Star Wars: Old Republic. Um, because I didn't do it the first time I played it. I think maybe I did. I don't remember. Yeah, um, yeah man. I tried playing uh, Dark Sider on Knights of the Old Republic. That was boring. The Dark Side on oh Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, no, you're talking about old Dark Side in in Star Wars: The Old Republic. The MMO. Okay, oh, the MMO. Okay. A lot more fun than it was playing the uh, playing the Rebel side. So, uh, we got a phone call now, and I believe this is going to be Leopold uh, calling in. Leopold, is that you? Uh, no. Uh, oh goodness, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we should have a call screener. Hey, who's this? Oh, this is Rich. Oh, oh, hey, Rich. How you doing? Oh, good. Um, I had a question for you. It's it's not on the game you're talking about now. Um, 
I had a lot of people telling me to play Destiny. Do y'all have any uh, insight on that? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Just a little bit. Of all the weekends that you would ask this question, he has not been here for like a month. James hasn't. <laughs> right. Um, but I would probably tell you the same thing that he would tell you is... I don't know. Well, all right. Let me. Let me. I'll go ahead and tell you what. What you absolutely need to know. If you have people telling you to play it, if they're your friends and they have the game, you'll you'll enjoy it. Yes. Okay. Uh, if you have people to play with, if you have a dedicated or semi dedicated group of players who are going to be on the same platform as you, um, and you can play with you, it is a lot of fun. I think for a while. Um, okay. I shouldn't even qualify for a while. Like, I was I. I I split with the game. It was not an amicable split. Yeah, but there's only people still enjoying it to this day. There day. are. And, but really, I, uh, how long did we play before I left? I mean, it was six it was weeks of solid, like, every time. day. That's mm-hmm. what I did when I went home yeah. was we all logged on and we played that game, and it was a it was really a lot of fun. Yeah, because I remember you were like, uh, they have that good – uh, buyback deal. I don't know if I want to jump but on it. But it was it, it was yeah, a lot yeah, yeah. of fun because we were playing together. Neither one of us liked playing. I, if I didn't see anybody else on that I knew, I didn't bother firing up the game. Okay. You know, so yeah. looking at my friends list on whatever system and I was playing we're on, we're a little d- we're a little different in that regard. I would uh, because I knew there was always something I could do. I could always go do the uh, well, I don't the, know, the, the if missions. The cave and the was there, yeah, stuff, yeah. <laughs> nah, but even before that, or after. Well, what that, I, I ended up what I ended up doing it was in January, and everybody kept telling me, so I decided. Uh, and I just bought a PlayStation 3 and an infamous second son. So, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't know if I needed to go ahead and buy it just to see if there was any cool hype to it or anything like that. I Again, I think that if you got people to play with, it's a good time for a little while, for a limited amount of time. Okay. Um, but wait, wait for it to hit the $20 rack. Yeah, and I'll tell you know I'll tell you what a good time to play it would probably be when whatever the expansion when is. the next expansion hits. Anytime an online centric game like this comes out, it's got a huge burst of activity for a while, and then everybody drops off. Then you have like a hardcore group of people that are just there, and that's what they play because that's their game. Then that drifts kind of a little lower, and then at some point the inevitable expansion is announced. Mm-hmm. And that brings everybody back to the game with uh, a, a fresh and renewed sense of interest in okay, what's so going it's kinda, on. It's kind of like when I played City of Heroes. So I was a tank in that. And so, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I got you. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I yeah, no problem. Thanks. Thanks right, for calling. Thank you, man. I appreciate Bye-bye. it. Hey, you're on in-game chat. Who's this? Hey, guys. It's Leonard this time around. How are you guys doing today? Hey, man. Hey, what's hey. up? Not much, man. I just wanted to... Give you guys a call and let you know how the the event went yesterday and all that stuff. The twenty four hour stream and uh, uh, thank you guys. Uh, call you and thank you and your guys' community for showing that support to me yesterday. Yeah, I was watching you play Archmage. Was that what that was? Yeah, I was playing Archage. Archage, uh, Arch- with Archage. My uh, guild members and all that. Uh, I want to say uh, it, it was it was definitely a great experience. And all you that sound stuff. like you've been playing games for twenty four hours. I, I know. Say, I, just I, wake I up. <laughs> I, I want. I want to go back to bed. That was it. I more <laughs> or less woke up just to call you guys and thank you guys and thank your community for being uh, part of it and uh, and uh, you know hosting me and doing it and everything. And uh, did you did you ever play Five Nights at Freddy's? Yes, we did. <laughs> okay. I, I took your guys' challenge. I took your challenge. And uh, was I, that you that made that challenge? Yes, I, I, I was one who told everybody to tell them to play Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay. Cause I remember. You said you would totally enjoy playing that yeah. last week. Yeah, I, I clearly, Not clearly really. don't remember that. I, I, it must be the <laughs> lack of sleep or something. Um, but yeah, the, the the highlight of that game, that first jump scare of that game, got me, and I cussed and I yelled, and I was <laughs> like, "Okay, let's let's do another hour." And I did that about at uh, four o'clock in the morning, so that was like hour twenty two, twenty three, more or less. You know that that lack of sleep was already kicked in. So, mm. uh, but uh, the the good news is, even though the goal of the the stream was just to get other gamers to go to extra dash life dot org and sign up, ended up raising two hundred and seventy dollars for our local children's miracle. That's Network, great. Which is uh, Children's of Alabama. So That's fantastic. Very nice. Good. And and then like I said, that was thanks to like your viewers and other people just uh, coming by and hanging out, and I just appreciate it. I, I uh, played uh, uh, some Skitty City Skyline. I saw you playing that as well. And uh, also, uh, uh, I would have to say my, my 
best to experience, like you guys were saying a second ago, you know, having a community of other gamers to play with is great. Because, uh, like, Arcade, I feel like that was the game I played the most right beside uh, Starbound, so... Yeah, see, the, doing doing a twenty four hour stream of a game, I could I could sit down and do City Skylines for a very long time, um, or uh, obviously now going back to to Pillars, mm-hmm. having something that can really carry my attention that long. Um, yeah, when when time just goes by yeah. like that. Unfortunately, yeah. we're not doing a twenty four hour stream of video games back in, coming up in November. Uh, no, we made the mistake of having to talk. We're going to do a twenty four hour <laughs> radio show for for in November and we'll see how that uh, we'll see how that goes but um, but we appreciate it man and we're and congratulations to you and when, when's your next big thing coming up uh, if if I have to think hard about it and all that stuff I'm trying in my back of my head plan something for uh, June and July okay. hopefully uh, one of my buddies at uh, retro game planet can help me uh, set something up and uh, we can do another local uh, sign up drive and get a bunch more gamers involved uh, be a part of extra life this year no that'd be great that'd be great well we appreciate you calling in and, and again congratulations no nah, thank you guys i appreciate y'all all right have a good one man all right well uh that is probably going to wrap it up here on the show just wanted to make mention of a few things uh just for not just for the people who are, who are listening live right now who may be in the chat room but for others who are going to be hearing this on the uh on the 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 podcast and everything else that it, that it gets out there. Um, we're starting. A, we're going to start a Patreon here pretty soon. Yep, we're, we've actually got right. put some work into it. Um, and, and, I, and 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 we'll put the link to to the Patreon in the in the chat room if you want to see it. And we'll we'll put it into the into the the show notes for this episode as well. But um, one of the things that we're or at least that I'm trying to figure out is we don't have to do rewards for people that back we don't have to say hey you gave us five bucks here is a keychain or something like that we don't have to do those things um i'd like to do something like that for you though we don't have t-shirts made or anything like that i'm kind of curious as to what you would want i don't want to know how much you would pay for these things i just kind of want to know what would you want as rewards would you want a t-shirt from the show and if you did would you rather it say something like some of the things that we've said on the show, not just, you know, in-game chat on there. Would you like it to say something like one of Matt's lines? I don't know. Uh, next thing I know was something like that. It, 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 what would you like to see as rewards? That's just kind of what I'm curious about as to what you would want. We've already gone with rewards as far as what we will do when we reach certain amounts. We're going we're gonna to continue to work on those. But stuff for you guys that actually give the money, uh, we're kind of curious about that. And we want you to get back in touch with us and let us know. And you can do that by sending us an email, everyone at ingamechat.net. So send an email there to kind of give us some ideas as to might, what you might like to see. Um, not for the amount that you pay, but just some of the items that you might like to get back from us. We already know what we're going to do. Extra shows, extra episodes, better equipment, stuff like that. We want to know what you would like to have personally for yourself. So appreciate that anyway thanks everybody for joining us uh, in the chat room as well as everybody listening on the stream and on the radio as well thanks to everybody who grabs us each week from itunes or wherever you get our show for later use we really appreciate it head on over to ingamechat.net and you can join us on twitter facebook our forums at colonyofgamers.com and you can subscribe to our youtube channel and if you're on steam we've got a steam group there you can join up with us and uh, play games with us and other listeners thanks everybody have a fantastic week We will see you next Saturday. I do not know what music this is, but I will guess that it is Mega Man. Have a good one. Oh, you know It's familiar, but I don't know. Double Dragon. Double Dragon. See you next week, guys.